with the many different groups that were against the draft, the United States Army, United States military in general, did not have the time to wait for a volunteer army. They had to act quickly. They needed at least four million men. That was the expectation. So one of the ways they fixed this problem is with the Selective Service Act in May of 1917. On this Selective Service Act, all able-bodied males, 21 to 31, had to register for the service. Later on, it was increased to 35 and dropped to 18, but originally at 21, every able-bodied male had to register for Selective Service. This included immigrants, African Americans, anybody, any able-bodied male. And this, of course, will cause other issues later, but right now the United States military is all their focuses on, we need to recoup four million men for this new war they're about to engage in. And one of the reasons they knew that they couldn't wait was a year prior, prior to the elections, on, on June of 1916, the United States military, the United States uh, government, had an idea that they might be pulled into this war. And they actually passed the National Defense Act. And this act put money into the system to increase the numbers from 120 to 160 Army regulars and from 180 to, or, to 450,000 National Guards. Yet, on the eve of, of the declaration of war, those numbers were nowhere matched. So this told the military, we need to implement a service, a conscription that's going to force people to come in. Another thing that they also did was the jones shafroth Act. The jones shafroth Act brought Puerto Rico under the guise of the American flag. This also gave Puerto Ricans the citizenship, and thus, when the Selective Service Act was passed, they were also susceptible for the draft. So a lot of Puerto Ricans were included in this draft amongst other immigrants, even though the Puerto Ricans were not immigrants themselves. They were pulled from their home island. With the Selective Service Act now in place, and all able-bodied males who sh are supposed to register, now everybody was given a number. Everybody was given uh, part of a board. Here in Kern County, Kern County was divided into two boards, Board 1 and Board 2 that was divided through Chester Avenue all the way north to Delano and south to Aaron Fraser Park. These two boards, everybody had to go to their board and register for the Selective Service. They were issued a number, and it's like a lottery system. As numbers are being pulled, anybody who randomly gets selected has to report to their board and thus being drafted. So not, uh, not everybody that joined the Selective Service or that registered got drafted but usually 66% of those people that were drafted were through the Selective Service. So it was, it was a major component of this new army that was created. This Selective Service Act is still in place today. It has origins to this time frame. But it, that's the easy part. The easy part is having a draft and having uh, people register and having people assign numbers. But how do you train all these people? How do you feed all these people? How do you house them? How do you move them around? These logistical nightmares is what the United States military, United States Army specifically, had to uh, approach with a logical solution. And what they started to do is they started developing 32 cantonments. Cantonments are military bases. They developed 32 all over the United States, 16 for regulars and 16 for National Guard units. Every unit now had a specific role to play. Prior to World War I, you saw militaries being from a certain region and everybody was from the same town or the same locale. Now you had people that certain skills were sent to different places for different jobs. Whether you were being infantry, whether you're going mechanized, whether you're going medical corps, all these things that we see in today's military comes from this time frame. But one of the bad things or one of the negative things about this draft is that it re- ignited some of the old racial stereotypes and some of the old issues with immigration. With, with all these logistical uh, movements of people and being spread all over the country for specific jobs, one issue that was hard to avoid, and many people knew this, was the issue of race and the issue of immigration. Uh, with the concept of race, this is still the 1900s. This is still Jim Crow segregation in some parts of the nation, and therefore the, conflict, the concept of how are we going to deal with the African-American soldier. The draft, the set of service, knows no color. It knows no gender. It just applies people who register. 
But now the human aspect comes in and they have to figure out what are we going to do with the African American soldiers. Prior to this, a lot of African Americans had their own special units and that is what a lot of uh, military people and politicians want to do at the same time. Many politicians did not want the African American soldier to join the white soldier and therefore create their own cantonments and their own training barracks. A lot of African Americans were relegated to uh, remedial labor, uh, ditch digging, road building, picking up dead bodies, stuff like that, and not allowed to fight at the, on the front lines. For A lot of military leaders feared that there would be a drop morale from white soldiers, but a lot of politicians had just a white supremacist mentality and did not want to offer African American opportunities. With minor exceptions, of course, the the Harlem Hellfighters that were offered to the French uh, military and thus they fought on the front lines very uh, heroically and bravely.